Mukuda returned to the Adventurer Guild to complete his quest, and he attracted so much attention because of the multiple huge bags full of goblin ears that he carried back to the guild. While some guild employees were busy checking the bags, another employee approached him, and she informed Mukuda that the guild master wanted to meet him with his familiars. Mukuda proceeded to meet the guild master, who introduced himself as Willem. Willem told Mukuda that he will be rewarded for taking care of the goblin settlement, but he's also excited to meet a Fenrir. Then Sui came out of Mukuda's bag after hearing about the goblins. Willem realized that Sui and Mukuda are using telepathy to communicate. Then Mukuda boasted about how strong and special Sui is, so Willem found the whole group interesting. Afterwards, Willem revealed the real reason why he asked to meet with Mukuda. The royal palace of Leonhardt welcomed the presence of a Fenrir in their kingdom, as it is a huge threat for other kingdoms. However, in exchange for having freedom and being free of disturbance from other nobles, they asked for Mukuda's help in times of emergency. Mukuda celebrated after hearing this. Afterwards, Willem asked Mukuda about his intention to increase his rank to F. He offered to increase Mukuda's rank directly to C, considering that he has a Fenrir as a familiar and in exchange for finishing some quests for him. Mukuda refused, however, Willem explained that the quests are A rank and S rank and are really for Fel. Hearing this, Fel announced proudly that there is nothing he couldn't do, which delighted Willem. Willem wanted to prepare for Fel's quest right away. However, after Mukuda noticed how fully aware Willem is of his situation, he decided that he could sell the boss level monsters Fel hunted to him. The guild butcher, Johan, was amazed after seeing the Orthros and Chimera, but Willem ordered him to keep everything a secret. Mukuda then explained that he hasn't taken out these monsters to avoid causing a commotion, and he only revealed it now because he trusts both Willem and Johan. However, Willem told Mukuda that although his guild could buy most of the monsters, he doesn't have enough funds for the Chimera and Orthros. While Johan was eagerly checking the monsters, he also explained that these are either S rank or close to it which made them really rare and valuable. At the same time, Sui suddenly came out of his bag. Motivated after seeing the monsters Fel hunted, he wished that he could beat high-ranking monsters easily like Fel, which made Mukuda visibly worried. Afterwards, Willem told him that he could return the next day for the monsters' payment and for his C-rank guild card. Mukuda asked his familiars what they wanted for dinner, and as usual, they both asked for meat. So Mukuda started buying ingredients that would go well with meat. Then he started boiling the rockbird breast in water mixed with sake and salt before slicing tomatoes and cucumbers. Then he shredded the cooked rockbird meat with the help of sui, and lastly, he added sesame dressing. After making the rockbird banbanji, he decided to make the rockbird and pepper stir fry next. He started by cutting the rockbird into bite-sized pieces before seasoning it with sake and soy sauce, and then he also sliced the bell peppers. Before searing both the meat and bell peppers in the pan, he also added some Chinese seasoning paste while stir-frying. Fell commented on how the meal isn't just meat, but he's still drooling while looking at it. Mukuda gulped some beer before he started eating. Both he and Sui really liked the sesame dressing. Then he also gave Sui the babanji that has oyster and soy sauce instead, which Sui really likes as well. Mukuda forgot to steam some rice, so he decided to make some sandwiches instead, which Sui wanted to try as well. After multiple servings, the group is finally done eating. They noticed how cramped the stable was for Fel, so Sui thought of melting the stable, but Mukuda stopped him, and instead he laid a foot in for Fel to make it a little more comfortable for him. Mukuda returned to the guild the next day. He picked up his guild card first, which is now made of silver after getting promoted to C rank. At the same time, he just needs to finish one quest in six months to maintain his guild membership. This is really convenient for him, so he's grateful to Willem. Willem also gave Mukuda the payment for all the monsters he had sold. His earnings for one batch of monsters were 461 gold coins, which is shocking because it is even bigger compared to his previous transaction. However, Willem calculated the total, and Mukuda was even more shocked, as it is 1,415 gold coins, but it doesn't even include the rewards for clearing the goblin settlement yet. After adding this, the final total was 1,946 gold coins. Mukuda was amazed with this amount, and after including his current coins, he has over 2,000 gold coins, which made him worried, thinking that he could be a target for thieves. Then Willem started explaining the quests that he needed Fel to finish. Fel must hunt a metal lizard in a pack of bloody hornbulls, and he explained the metal lizard's location and its abilities. He also explained that the reason adventurers couldn't hunt the lizard was due to its metallic scale 
which made it impossible to damage it with physical attacks. While the bull's violent nature and its large packs are what make the other quest difficult for adventurers, however, Fel and Willem agreed that the bull's meat really has an exquisite taste. Fel got excited thinking how delicious the bull's meat would be with Mukuda's cooking skills, while Willem was worried after seeing Fel and Mukuda's creepy laugh. After leaving the guild, Mukuda and Fel planned when they should depart for the quest. Mukuda thought that they should leave the next morning. However, Fel was excited to eat the bull's grilled meat, so he's even willing to depart immediately. But Mukuda still has some things to do, so they decided to leave in the morning. Mukuda then visited Lambert's shop, where he let Sui choose a new bag. But he also ended up buying a new purse, boots, and a belt with a sheath. In total, the items would cost 11 gold coins. However, Lambert wouldn't let Mukuda pay, as he's grateful to Mukuda for saving his life. At the same time, he also found out how expensive the meat they had eaten while traveling with Mukuda was. Afterwards, Lambert also asked if Mukuda still had the skin of the serpent that he had cooked previously. But since Mukuda just sold most of the monsters he had hunted to the guild, including all the serpents, he doesn't have any left, so Lambert could just ask Mukuda to sell him next time if he has the skin of a serpent again. After leaving, Fel complained about how long Mukuda had stayed in the shop. But Mukuda was really happy with all the stuff he got, including Sui's new bag, so he thought it was worthwhile. Then Fel asked Mukuda to cook snake for dinner. He started craving it after listening to Mukuda and Lambert's conversation about snake. Sui agreed, as he really liked the kara of ghee that he had eaten previously. And Mukuda decided that he'd go all out for dinner in preparation for the next morning's quest. After the marinade was ready, Mukuda decided that he would cook it with soy sauce and salt base like last time. He's planning to prepare enough food until his two familiars can't eat anymore. After mixing the meat with flour and seasonings, he started frying it at a low temperature first thinking that he would fry it twice to make it even more delicious. Then he started frying it at a high temperature to make it crispy. After seeing Mukuda try the first batch of karaagi, both Fel and Sui are complaining. They urged Mukuda to serve it to them right away. After getting their servings, the two familiars started devouring them, and Sui noticed the improvements in taste right away, so Mukuda explained that it was because he fried it twice. And before Mukuda could cook another batch, Fel and Sui were already finished with their first servings. After seeing the two ask for more, Mukuda started frying again. Mukuda was happy to see his familiars satisfied. However, he continued frying the meat, which surprised Fel. Mukuda explained that it will be for him, and he'll be saving some for later. Fel called Mukuda thoughtful, thinking that it was all for him. At the same time, Mukuda used the remaining oil to fry some tonkatsu and chicken katsu. After Mukuda finished cooking, he gulped some beer while happily eating his kara agi and tonkatsu, and he didn't realize that both Fel and Sui were already sleeping. Then he continued eating while watching the moon, and he realized that it had been a long time since he had eaten alone. Then the scene changed to Ninrir, who's eating Mukuda's latest offering. After seeing how many sweets the goddess was eating, Mukuda asked if she wouldn't get fat. Ninrir refuted the idea that a goddess would gain weight. At the same time, Ninrir still hasn't noticed the other goddesses watching her. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and look forward to the next part.